care and feeding of werewolves. Episode 17 Living the Nightmare Hello, and welcome to Care and Feeding of Werewolves, a podcast addressing issues and current events in the paranormal community. I'm your host, Hazel Thornton. Dear Hazel, I think my wife's been poisoning me. She keeps bees, and there's a lot of mountain laurel where we live, but we've never had a problem with it, and we've always been careful about who we give some to. Then the nymph next door planted oleander and rhododendrons, and I think the toxins are getting too much for me. My wife's a dwarf, so she hasn't had a problem. I like the new honey. It tastes great, kind of spicy, a little bubbly. My question is, how much can I safely have? Oh, and I'm a demon, if that helps. Oh, where to even start? That spicy, bubbly taste is a poisonous cocktail of grianotoxin, oleandrin, narin, and digitoxygenin, but you probably already knew that. You know what? I'm too tired to try and tell you how bad of an idea this is, because you already know. Send me a sample and I'll test it. Let me tell you about my night last night and you might get an idea why I'm tired and not in the mood to talk someone out of a bad idea. Most people, if they came across a used journal at the goblin market in a language that they didn't speak, they wouldn't try to cast any spells from it. At least, this is what I tell myself in order to get through the day without curling up in the fetal position and screaming. We have to keep keep moving or else the worms worms will find us. us. What worms? Oh my goddess! Why is there a giant mass of carnivorous gummy worms? What is wrong with you? Most people, if they came across a used journal at the goblin market in a language that they didn't speak, they wouldn't try to cast any spells from it. At least, this is what I tell myself in order to get through the day without curling up in the fetal position and screaming. When I was a kid, my big sister held me down and shoved a gummy worm up my nose and told me it would eat my brain and then take over my body and pilot it like a mech suit made out of me. I'm glad I'm an only child. Come on, let's get out of here. When I got a call from someone telling me that their best friend plugged an unknown spell into Google Translate and cast it on a drunken dare, I thought I was being pranked. Sadly, That was not the case. Poor life choices. My faith in people shrank three sizes that day as I drove across town. Why was it a home visit? Because both the patient and the friend that was calling on their behalf were drunk. Oh, and the patient was trapped in a nightmare hellscape of their own creation. Now, normally... This would be less than ideal, but no cause for alarm. Unless the injuries they took on the dreamscape were manifesting on his physical body. I bandaged the worst of the wounds so he wouldn't bleed out before I pulled him out. Let's go upstairs and get a bandage on this. Some of them required stitches, but since more wounds were appearing, I wanted to to minimize the risk of having them die before I could find him. I'm not sure what that would do to me, but I don't want to find out. 
So, you know, no pressure or anything. I used a spell to put myself under and help find his dream. Although dream walking isn't a primary strength in our family line, healing gets that honor. It's still fairly strong. Why are you naked? You think maybe you could put a shirt on? If at any point you find yourself naked while treating a patient, something has gone horribly wrong. Because I manifested in front of your fifth grade class, and you make one crack about sexual healing, I will curse you so that whenever you go to charge your phone, the charger cord is missing. And it won't turn up until you buy a new one. You sound just like my mom. For that, I should let the worms eat you. How'd we end up back here? We were just in my bedroom. The topic of the day is magic in the bedroom. Come on, this way. Wait, why are we going towards the creepy noises? Because dream logic doesn't resemble earth logic. The hulking figure stalking towards us in the dim room was a giant animatronic rodent mascot of a certain restaurant chain that caters to children. Except this one looked like he'd had a makeover at Five Nights at Freddy's. The long, bloody knife it wielded was no doubt what had caused the patient's wounds. Quick, in the ball pit! Oh, gross. Dream walking is tricky because the dreamscape is like a labyrinth designed by M.C. Escher, and to escape a nightmare, you have to go towards the most terrifying aspects. Haunted house? Enter the darkened basement alone. Afraid of heights? Jump off that building. Disgusting ball pit with who knows what waiting at the bottom to eat you? Cannonball! Zombie dogs, run! Every vine was a hangman's noose. Each branch a hand as all of nature turned against Zombies are one of my worst nightmares. If there was a zombie virus, I'd inevitably end up with a turned patient. And, well, I normally don't have to worry about my patients biting me. Or if they do, there's usually a severely injured vampire and a safe word involved. Friday nights used to be crazy busy because I was always working. But now, plus, I'd be useless at fighting them off because I know nothing about guns. And I only have experience with scalpels, which wouldn't be much help since that means you'd have to get within fighting range. Then there's the fact that I'm not the most athletic person in the world. I have a thing against passing out and dying, and we'd already been running from the mouse from hell, but at least they were the slow, dumb ones. Try not to wake the sleeping trees. This is like my first shroom trip. Goblins grow the best ones. The trick is keeping the shrooms from sprouting legs and running away. Never look over your shoulder when alone in the woods. The unseen doesn't like it. That was why I was at the market. Me and my buddy was gonna spend the weekend. I will not curse stupid people. I will not curse stupid people. Hey, what's with the negativity? Hey, are those runes instead of stars? Wait, just one rune over and over. The side, the, uh, uh Sideways cup one? It was that damn rune again, Perthro. I swear, that freaking thing is following me everywhere. I've been here too long. Your dream's starting to adapt to me. Not good. There are no stars and will never be again. Things are beyond your control. Where are we? Oh, fuck. What, what is that? My mother recently disappeared, which is uncharacteristic of her. My worst nightmare. I have been surgically enucleated. You knew her? Lungs, heart, and liver have I been removed, as her. have her. All four limbs. What the fuck happened? If you're still alive. What it's does it look a like? Section. Whoa, chill. No, I won't chill. This is why I'm pissed. This is happening out there, and right now I'm in your fucked up head, rescuing you from your own stupidity instead of doing something about it. 
I thought you were just a dog. How could you stop this? After all, I'm not a detective. His words cut me to the core. They were exactly what I'd been trying not to think about since this whole thing started. You see, there's no room for doubt in magic. You have to dedicate everything to the goal. Negative self-talk undermines your strength and is a distraction. Think too much about failing and you will. That's really hard to do when your brain never shuts up. To hear my own secret fears spoken aloud gave them weight. Doesn't matter. You're a civilian. You don't stand a chance. I can still save us all. I, I have to. We're getting the fuck out of here. Nothing physical can stay. They're gaining on us. We have to jump. I can't. You have to. This is the way out. How do you know that? You've been running from this all along. You just didn't know it yet. Here, take this knife. Where'd you get that? If the sharks get too close, use it. Their eyes, nose, and gills are most vulnerable. How, how do you know this? Same principle as dragons, although I'm assuming about the gills, since it's the same for mermaids and naiads, so... You, you're kind of scary when you're all covered in blood like that. Ready to come make some sushi? Count of three. Three! Hey, man! <laughs> the Mustang, <laughs> motherfucker! <laughs> Little bones no, out of them! man! Peace! Peace out, man! No, I will I hear peace you, you out! Bitch. The, like, pieces, man! This is the end. What comes next is the beginning. I took the journal as part of my fee. Since I don't speak Finnish, it's currently propping up my monitor. Remember, kids, the next time you think, hold my beer and watch this, you might end up passing out, losing bladder control, and reliving every single nightmare you've ever had, naked, and with a pissed-off witch dragging you back to the land of the living. Worst of all, you might end up on our podcast as an example of what not to do. Care and Feeding of Werewolves is a podcast distributed by Kerfuffle and Chaos Productions and licensed under a Creative Commons non-commercial attribution share alike 4.0 international. Today's episode was written and performed by Brenna Anderson Dowd. Patient performed by Frederick Elmore. Sound design by Frederick Elmore and music by Kevin Elmore. Find us on Facebook or Tumblr at Care and Feeding of Werewolves. Tweet us at Care Werewolves or email us at feedingwerewolves at gmail.com. Please rate and review. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. Content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your doctor or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of an episode. Reliance on any information provided by Care and Feeding of Werewolves, Kerfuffle and Chaos Productions, or anyone involved with the production of this podcast is solely at your own risk. Although, it's still probably not a good idea to mess with sketchy secondhand spellbooks in another language. <laughs> <laughs>